Amazon finally split. Remember everybody for years and years and years, hey, when is Amazon splitting? When is Amazon splitting? They finally got the news last night. Amazon splitting 20 for one. They took the Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, I apologize, there was no uh, video yesterday. Um, my son called me yesterday uh, after the close, said his bus, his bus that takes him back home, uh, got into a fender bender with another car. Luckily, nobody was injured. Uh, the car, uh, not so much. Uh, so basically, the, there was supposed to be another bus that came and never came. So I had to drive 45 minutes one way, 45 minutes back. By the time I got home, it was like 6.30. And my daughter had basketball practice at 7.25. So I apologize. There was no uh, video yesterday. But a, a crazy, crazy uh, 24 hours. Uh, if you guys remember going back to what day we? Thursday to Tuesday, right? If you guys remember, we were up uh, 500 points, had that really good aggressive uh, day to the downside and then around 12 o'clock the market reversed was up like five six hundred points and then into the close there was a sell-off from Dow up 600 to being Dow uh, down 180 the Nasdaq went red so you're talking about 800 points off the highs in the last hour and the next day which was yesterday they gapped up 600 points basically erasing the previous 12 hours highs or the 12 hours lows running back up and basically the market was absolutely uh, all over the place and when the tape gets all over the place guess what charts get absolutely skewed and you know the, the one recourse you had yesterday was either chase stocks into supply which basically most names uh, were going into supply tried to short them off of supply uh, try to scalp some things or kind of stay uh, away from yesterday's activity and, and as great as it looked on paper yesterday, I, I found very, very little, little value yesterday. You know, there's a couple of scalps here and there, but again, I'm not big into buying stocks into uh, daily supply while we're underneath the 200 day moving average on the queues and yada, 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 we came into today. And you know, if, if you looked at last night's research, there was very few things that you really wanted to buy, right? Oil names uh, continued today. Uh, they, you know, modest decline, basically about 2%, which was absolutely nothing considering uh, the big rise in oil in the last uh, couple of weeks. We had the CPI today that really uh, didn't move the needle, uh, kind of met expectations and yada, yada, yada. When you look at uh, the day's activity, you know, we gave back some money. Uh, again, it's, it's very, very tough to even scratch that statement. It's very, very tough to turn around and say, hey, Q's just gave back a little bit from yesterday's gain. I mean, look, what gain? I mean, we, I mean, look look where we were uh, two months ago and look where we are now. It, it's like losing $100,000 and turning around and say, yo, I just made two grand. Yes, right? So again, we're still way deep, deep underneath supply. Uh, and ironically today and yesterday, you know, we ran up at one point seven, eight hundred points on the Dow, about almost five hundred on the Nasdaq. The ironic part about today's session, there was a lot more value today than it was uh, yesterday. And again, it's not about the scoreboard. It's not about uh, being right or being wrong. It's it's whatever your uh, process is. You're trading, you know, on that value, whether it's the long side to the short side. And when you look at most charts, and again, even today, right? When you look at most names you're going to get a lot more value to the downside. Because again, at the overall spectrum of things, we're still underneath uh, the 200 day moving average. And as we know, and as we, we've been saying for years and years and years, no matter how bad a market is, you're still going to get aggressive moves up. And that's again, again that's what we're seeing consistently, right? Not, not on the normal, but consistency. Here was, you know, three day rally stuffed into supply, a two day rally stuffed into supply, a four day rally stuffed into supply. We had another rally yesterday, today, lower highs, lower lows, and yada, 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 right? Here we are again. The challenging part about what we're seeing now, both on the long and on the short side, again, on the long side, you're just not getting a lot of room to get an expanded move. Can you get us trade here and there? Of course, right? It's the market. The market moves up, the market moves down. And ironically today, um, the bulls got kind of a stick save today. We had a you know pretty aggressive uh, two o'clock reversal back to the upside and kind of destroyed a lot of really good value 
uh, for tomorrow. But again, that's what the market is. And this is not a market you can sit there and trade 10, 15, 20 stocks. It's just, it's just not there. It's like you're trying to get one or two or three uh, pretty good value plays uh, in the direction where the futures are pushing, the direction where the sentiment is, and you're hoping those stocks confirm. Because again, there's a lot of days, and, and if you do your, your research kind of going into uh, tomorrow, you're not gonna get a lot of value, you're just not. I mean, look at, you know, go through the charts and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, are there plays you can take advantage? I mean, look at GameStop, right? Here's the name I'm watching for the next couple of days. It get, had a big gap down the last three, four days, and it's just kind of flagging here. You know, eventually if GameStop starts building below this channel, of course this thing is a short, right? You know, if you, if you trade like, you know, all these meme names, and again, it's it's amazing how this thing even, even held up. But the point is, look at this channel here. This is something I'm interested in. And usually I wouldn't trade GameStop because there's so many other names I'd rather do anything, but hey, I'm interested in this channel because the longer it builds and continues to put in lower highs on the five-day moving average, eventually it's gonna snap this area here. And eventually, you know, when you snap that area, you could go to the next measured potential of 86 bucks. So this definitely interests me. Uh, a name like UPST, you know, definitely interests me. I mean, look at that, again, it's the same thing as, as GameStop. It's just building a kind of a nice little base here. Uh, it held the range several times on the bottom channel here. And if that bottom channel snaps, maybe this thing could, could get hit as well. Look at the upside names. Again, here's my point about you have to be a little bit more creative. This is not the market that you want. It's the market that you have. On the upside, yeah, a name like PSTG looks really good. This is any beta name, of course. Yeah, I'd take a definitely shot on it. Watch this thing. Keep an eye on the top of this channel here. If PSTG confirms, maybe you get a nice upside push. And a name like VRTX that we've had from this channel break and this channel break, it's setting up fairly well, a biotech name. This is a name uh, that you have to be super patient with, but again, look at the channel here, right? Again, beggars can't be choosers. Look at the channel. If it starts building above this channel, maybe this thing wakes up as well. Um, and going back to last night, um, you know, you had that really big news. And again, we, last night we didn't have a video, but you had that really, really big news that, hey, Amazon finally split. Remember everybody for years and years and years, hey, when is Amazon splitting? When is Amazon splitting? They finally got the news last night, Amazon splitting 20 for one. They took a page out of Google. They, they're buying back $10 billion worth of stock. But, but look what happened today, right? Um, and we had, a, and again, we had a pivot today in Amazon off that, uh, off that initial 29.20 that popped up 20 points very quickly, but it popped right into daily supply. And again, is this a lo looking like a chart that you have to be long? That's my point. The value is very, very difficult on the upside unless you have a 5, 10, 20 year horizon. And, we, and by the way, you still have to get above uh, the 5, the 50, and the 20, and the 200 day moving average uh, for, for any, any expanded uh, measure potential in the name. And if they did take the playbook from Google, and I don't know why they would, right? Look at what Google did from their split, right? Here's the announcement split. It went from 30, 30, all the way to 2,500. So again, the bears uh, are still definitely in control. It doesn't make a difference if you have one or two days of spikes, this, that, the other thing. Um, you could clearly see again if you if you don't have eyes and you and you and you refuse to kind of acknowledge what's going on, you could start making excuses. Well, the market is oversold. Yeah, I mean I've been in bear markets for two three years. Again, hopefully this won't last that long. It's only been a couple of months or so, but it's out there, right? History has proven us. Uh, it's been out there. It continues to be out there, and there's definitely a possibility that we could be in this thing longer than anybody wants or anybody uh, uh, cares for. Again, if you look at the headlines, you have Ukraine uh, and Russia. The idea yesterday, because of that rally, was hey, maybe they're finally going to get some sort of uh, peace, uh, you know, peace something done. Right? Nothing really happened. Uh, yesterday, so we started, you know, kind of moving back down. Nasdaq today only down uh, one percent compared to yesterday's mode. But the point is, again, they couldn't capitalize uh, on yesterday's uh, action. And maybe, yeah, you know, listen, maybe they rally tomorrow, maybe they don't. But we definitely have to uh, be prepared from both sides. That's the point. You don't have to act, right? You don't have to be a participant on that side. But the point is. Uh, you have to be prepared. Uh, after the close, you had Rivian uh, come out with earnings. Um, you know, not great, right? You know, not, not great. Uh, moving down, you have Oracle came out after the close. You know, not great, not bad. It's kind of uh, flat after the close. Uh, I think it was also, what also came out after the close? Um, 
I don't remember. Anyway, the point is going into tomorrow, it's Friday. Guys, remember, look for value, right? That's the name of the game, whether it's one stock, two stocks, whatever it is. It's not how many you trade, it's how many you trade properly. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Uh, Oxy really didn't do a lot. Again, oil got pulled, um, not a big move at all. Uh, Oxy got rejected 59 three times, big, big level. Uh, Oxy only ran up like 60 cents or so. You can see it here, only 60 cents, you know, came right back down and blah, blah, blah. But overall, these oil names continue to be uh, overall pretty healthy. And again, here's the value to the downside. Gilead, not a big mover yet, but the most important part is it did break uh, a macro daily channel, 58, 20, 58. If it builds below, uh, can flush. Here is Gilead. Went down about a buck, nothing nothing crazy, but again, you, you watch the bottom channel here for confirms. Uh, it goes lower. Clorox got hit, right? Clorox finally took out um, that earnings low, 137. If it builds below, can flush more. Uh, here it was Clorox. And again, this is my point. Look at the names we're talking about, right? We're not talking about Facebook. We're not talking about Apple. Those stocks are destroyed and they continue to get, you know, to kind of get hit and they rally, get hit. But the value, you know, is really not there in a lot of names. So uh, Clorox took out 20, uh, 37, traded all the way down to 31. Really, really uh, nice move uh, there. Uh, Tesla got hit. Really good move. Really good move. Definitely the move of the day. Uh, 830, 820, 829, if it builds below, can flush. You know, stock went all the way down to 810. I thought it was going to get down to 806. You can see here why I said 806. It got a nice kick save here at the uh, at the last uh, hour and a half, and now it's back to the middle of the channel. But really nice move. Again, not every single thing needs to be a four or five day uh, potential, but, you know, really nice move there. Obviously, Boeing never got above 183. Uh, you know, 22s takes them off. 806 next stop again. Uh, Tesla went all the way down to uh, all the way down to the 810 uh, level. Again, uh, there's obviously a big area coming up uh, if we uh, get to those levels. But again, going into tomorrow, you have a lot of stocks in the middle of the ranges. It's going to be it's not going to be the most exciting day. Uh, if you if you are religious, pray to the market gods today for some beta name that gets upgraded, it gets downgraded. Maybe we can you can find some value. Amazon, you know. <sighs> Right? I mean, you know, maybe we'll watch the top of the channel here. Maybe it's a delayed reaction, right? Maybe we'll watch the top of the channel here where it got rejected twice. Maybe it wakes up for a second day tomorrow. But again, don't put a lot of emphasis into the trading day tomorrow because again, everything's in the middle of the charts. And the most important part is we need a clear sign to see what happens next. Guys, have a great night. God bless. Uh, the rest of you guys, I will see you tomorrow. And for everybody else, I will see you on the weekend video. God bless. Take care.